Okay, so I was commissioned to build a 36 by 30 by 36 uh, maple butcher block kitchen island. Just a basic uh, frame, uh, nothing fancy. They didn't want any shelves or anything. So like most projects or pretty much all projects, they start at the sawmill and then I bring back and uh, cut the to the rough length uh, this maple and just kind of get a kind of a straight face as much as possible before we start really getting into the milling up process with the table saw <clears throat> one other thing i had to address with this video as you saw in the first couple seconds there i was loading up my uh, my truck um very emotional i traded that truck in for a new truck um and i'm pretty upset about it to a certain extent i mean i got a great truck and a little bigger a um, little more features safety and all that better gas etc but um that was a great truck i had it for almost 14 years and just made me a lot of money very very dependable and i hope it goes to a good home Okay, so back to the project. So here I'm just laying out the, the wood as I mill it up. Um, it's going to run, run I think, through the miter saw, jointer, and planer for the most part. And also we'll, we'll be using a table saw. But right now for this part, we're just going to be just cutting it up um, and just lining up the orientation of how I want to lay it out. So now we're just going to go through the, the glue up lamination of the first part of this. So it's going to be three sections and then we'll have one major section at the end, which I won't go into detail with that because it's kind of the same repetitive steps. Just kind of glue up and clamp uh, nice even pressure with the cabinet clamps on the bottom I like to use. And I like to use uh, pipe clamps and bar clamps, etc. on the top and keep everything nice and level especially on the edges uh if we have to throw some f-style clamps in some calls to keep them everything so everything stays nice and jointed and not raised up at any section any uneven sections that's a, also a good practice also here so we're just going to glue up and, and just get these first three sections set up So I glued these up so I could run them through the, the planer here uh, after they are done drying the next day. This is um, three sections, like I said. So I'm just going to line them up, make sure they're all the same thickness um, before we do our last glue up of all three sections, which I'm not really going to go, like I said, into detail with that since it's pretty much a basic uh, glue up and same clamping pressure and everything. There's what it looks like. So that's where we're at now. So we're going to let that sit overnight and move on to uh, other sections of this build. Okay, so now it's the next day and um, the final globe is done. So now we're going to run the hand planer. So we're gonna use a pencil to mark out where we're going to plane and sand. We got a lot of plane and sand to do. Obviously, I can't run this 30 inch wide butcher block through my 13 inch planer. So I have to use the hand planer. I could have set up a route or jig or something or sled, but this is pretty, pretty uh, easy to, to do. And as long as you mark it with the pencil, it's fairly easy to, it just takes a little more time. Um, but it definitely, definitely works. And with the right sand and this thing comes out pretty nice. So here I'm going to cut the final length on both sides. And this kind of wasn't fun because this, this block is very heavy right now. And I have to flip it over because my saw only goes two inches deep. So it's obviously four inch thick butcher block. So I had to flip it over both sides to get the final cut, as you can see here. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the frame. So the frame is going to be white oak, and I'm using eight quarter uh, white oak, and I'm going to be laminate legs. So I'm going to just be milling them up real quick. They're going to be about 33, 32 and a quarter inches in length or height, I guess you could say. 
since the block is four inches, uh, roughly four inches thick. I think it came at almost three um, and seven eighths or just under. So it's going to be roughly uh, 36 inches high on all together, especially with the feet. I'm going to also be putting level feet on. So here I'm just going through the, um, the mill, mill process, you know, miter saw, jointer, table saw, get my uh, final thickness. And then we'll run everything to the planer and then we'll glue it all up, uh, four legs, we'll glue it up one time and then move on to the uh, striker tape. Okay, so now we're on to the, uh, the aprons and stretchers now. So we're going to be uh, cutting these. These are going to be, I think they're going to be 20 and 27, uh, 20 inches for the sides and 27 for the, the front and backs. Uh, there's going to be no bottom aprons and stretchers. It's just going to be top, almost like a, a basic dining room table. Uh, they didn't want any bottom shelves or anything. So we're just going to mill it up uh, as usual. Same steps, um, miter saw, jointer, thickness planer and we all already milled this up through the table saw earlier so now we're just, I'm just going to run a, um, a chamfer on each edge of each frame piece while I have the router out and we'll do the legs and the like I said the sides strikers and aprons and do a nice little sanding up to about 120 grit before we start the assembly Okay, so now I'm just marking out my uh, my joints for the the joinery. So I'm going to be using a domino. I know um, a lot of people don't like the domino, but for me, I'm sort of a production shop at this point, and I am more than overly busy. So the domino it doesn't really speed up the process too much, but it's definitely faster than you know hand cutting um, tenons and you know mortises um, with chisels and things. Uh, so I do use the domino a lot. You know, I don't want to use pocket screws. I don't like the strength of pocket screws sometimes um, with with thicker legs, especially. And so I like um, like the domino. I'm using a 50, a 10 by 50 millimeter dominoes. So I'm going to just um, cut out my mortises. And on the legs themselves, I'm going to cut the mortise a little wider. So typically here, I would use the the plunge uh, jig for this, but I don't like that all the time because if you look. Um, You'll see I have that center marking here, and that marking there is where I know the center of my my joint is going to be, my mortise is going to be. And I use a side little, um, I guess you call them like the um, little flat pieces to kind of keep my my uh, the other mortise to keep the uh, domino level and lined up. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just going to use the domino. I'm going to be using a uh, wider mortises on the legs and tight. Uh, mortises and the tight set and on the um, on the stretchers and aprons where I'm going to be inserting the dominoes. So right now I'm just going to dry fit everything, make sure everything fits, and then we're going to do the glue up and final build, uh, which is it's to me is a real fun part of of this because usually if you do this correct, um, it goes together great um, to me and nice and level. So compared to pocket screws at times, I don't get as much of a level build a lot. Um, that's why I don't really I'm not a big fan of the pocket screws as much. Uh, I know they, they could be pretty fast, uh, faster than the domino even, but um, I just don't think they come out uh, square a lot of times, where the, the domino comes together like a big puzzle. Uh, and like I said, if you mark everything correctly, it takes a little more time, but uh, it comes out real nice, and it's kind of satisfying to put everything together and then clamp it up and let it sit overnight.
So it's, it's the next day, and I let the uh, side stretchers um, with the legs uh, dry up overnight as they were gluing up, obviously. So now I'm going to assemble the rest of the uh, front and back uh, stretchers uh, and aprons now um, and let that sit for a few hours also um, so it dries. And I'm also going to be using uh, corner brackets for this. And, and even though I said I don't like using pocket holes for drawing like this, I do use pocket holes for a center uh, brace piece that I'll have going across the center of this. I like to use some kind of screws uh, on, on something this heavy. Uh, they make it just more sturdy, just a little more uh, redundant, um, especially with the corner brackets. They have obviously work well, too. I use them for this, things like this, and dining room tables, especially, uh, just to give me an extra source of strength for the legs to the, um, to, this, to, the, to the frame pieces. So here I'm just gluing everything up, fitting everything together. It gets a little awkward here because it's really heavy um, now, I'm trying to stick this on top of the other one. So I'm going to just lay it on the ground here. And just use the, the little mallet here and just kind of tap it in. And this comes together great. Nice and square. Um, and really seamless. So, like I said, if you measure everything correctly, uh, using um, the domino joiner definitely has its its benefits. Um, and so does, I guess you could do just a regular um, hand cut, you know, with a table saw or a bandsaw, you know, chisel. Uh, you could do your, or if you have a mortar, sir, you could do your mortise and tenon joinery uh, by hand, or you know, with, with, if you have the certain other tools, paint a rat or etc. But uh, I just it, this 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 was an investment that is worth worth its weight in gold. Um, I know a lot of people can't afford Domino, and uh, and I get it. It was definitely was it wasn't it wasn't fun when I had to pay for it, um, but it definitely has paid for itself, and that's what I would recommend if you are a busy shop. Uh, if you're just a hobbyist, no, I wouldn't recommend this. But if you're a busy shop and you're selling product, I think the Domino is a, is a good investment. So everything's kind of built now, um, dry. And now we're going to start doing the corner brackets and set up the center brackets. Okay, so here I'm just going to fill in some cracks with some epoxy with some black dye. And also here I'm going to be um, putting level feet on the bottom legs. Um, and I like to just drill the center hole out if I get my mark in. And then I use a, a, a forstner bit, one inch forstner bit uh, that will cover uh, the feet in themselves if they're not being used. Uh, just kind of hides them a little better. And it's a common practice for a lot of woodworkers. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there showing how the people do this and it's fairly simple yeah. just gotta take your time and so now we're back to the top here we're just gonna start sanding. and i did run a little uh round over on the bottom and the top all four sides i didn't show that um i just wasn't filming at the time so now we're just going to start sanding everything up just get everything cleaned up because we're pretty much almost done this project now it's just going to be just put some uh finish on um sanding cleaning up and we're going to be using some mineral oil after our water pop here, here uh, some light sanding, 
and we're going to be using my homemade uh, board wax that I, I use. Uh, it's just a mix of mineral oil and beeswax uh, that I cook up and uh, put in containers. Also here, as you see, I'm using the, uh, the um, biscuit joiner, and this is how we're going to mount the top on site. We're going to do that on site, so it's not going to be a video for that. Um, I'm just going to be doing that at the client's home. It's just easier to transport it uh, in two pieces because this top is very, very heavy. And like I said here, we're going to be using the Z-clips for that. And here's the board butter. I'm going to just put a couple coats of this on. Just wipe it on. You don't need a ton of this. Just, just enough to kind of fill it in, get a little buffer. And that's it. I just use a dry cloth uh, for this. And this project's pretty much done. Um, client loved it. Uh, came out nice. I didn't have to use level feet. Thank God everything came out level and the store was level, but we have them on there just in case, especially as to move it ever and to a different part of his floor. And this is the finished product. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. Have a good one. Bye.